everyone, welcome to a video that has been a long time in the making. I've actually been thinking about this for three or four months and actually planned maybe doing a podcast episode about it, but then I decided, yeah, but could I talk about this for an hour and a half straight? Maybe, maybe not. So I decided maybe a video would be a better way to introduce this topic, introduce this, uh, yeah, item here. So what I have today is I'm talking about the IGS PGM. What that is, it's an arcade board, kind of like a Neo Geo MVS, just with a much smaller library. And what's really cool about it is that you're able to play some bootleg cave games on the IGS PGM. And the games that you can play are Ketsui, DOJ, Escaluda and B-Storm, so some really quality titles. I know some people may not think that B-Storm's that great, but still, I think it's pretty cool. And the other three are just considered some of the best shmups of all time, so definitely worth it just for Ketsui and DOJ alone, but you add in Escaluda and B-Storm and you've got a cool system on your hand. And so what's really cool about this thing is that it is way more affordable than any other PCB type stuff out there right now. I mean, yeah, you can buy some cheap PCBs, I'm sure, but of quality shmups, this is just the most affordable way to go about things. And yes, obviously, like I mentioned, these carts are bootlegged. I don't think they, you know, ever made official carts for this thing, but whatever, you know. That's not something that bothers me too much. If Cave put out some official carts, maybe I'd change my mind there, but Anyway, with PCBs and how expensive they're getting, I think having a bootleg is almost like closer to legit than what most people do anyway, right? So the picture you're looking at here, yes, it's ugly, but what it is, it's my setup. I should, I probably, you know, if I was a really neat, organized person, I'd make a nice little consoleized box type thing. But this is just some spare dresser stuff I had laying around, so I just used it to make a PGM on a platter. So let me go ahead and kind of identify what you're looking at. So in the back there, this is the PGM itself. And then you see there, there's the card. I think it's DOJ that's in there right now. So that's the PGM. Yeah, it's dirty. <laughs> it came dirty. And then right here is the super gun. And I'm going today, I'm going to go through and kind of give you instructions on where to get everything, how to get things set up. Just not super in depth, obviously, because I don't know, I don't really have the energy to do that, but uh, as much as I can relate to someone, and then if you have more questions about setting this up, just feel free to hit me up, and I know I'll walk you through it, so. That's the super gun, and I think this is a really good way to go about things. I think this is the super gun to get these days, really, of the ones I've been looking around. This is the one to get, so and I'll show you where to get that in a bit, and it's not too expensive either. Then this here is the USB decoder. So this is, you can actually see my arcade stick in the corner there. This is how I connect my arcade stick up to the the PGM, the super gun to play the games. If you look back here, you actually can direct wire your arcade stick in there if you want. And if you were just only, like if, this, if you're gonna put this in a cabinet for instance, you wouldn't need the decoder, right? You could just direct wire the parts into it. So this is just if you have a uh, setup where you don't want to use a cabinet and you just want to use your arcade stick. So that's the USB decoder. I think that's most people, that's the route they'll go. But in case you want to put this in a cabinet, you don't need it. Yeah, I'm just using Sonic 2 to hold up the super gun. <laughs> just because I have plenty of copies of that game. This is what the cart looks like, kind of just perspective on the size of it. It's pretty large. And then right here is a power supply. So you need a power supply for the super gun slash PGM. So the PGM itself, you don't plug into anything. It just plugs into the super gun. And then the super gun supplies, is the, supplies the power, the logic, all that stuff to it. Everything you need. But this is just a power supply that is really easy to find. I just salvaged it from an old busted ass computer. So it's really not that expensive to get a power supply. I'd, I'd guess around 10 bucks. If you don't have an old busted computer laying around, you probably could go to a thrift store and find one and just rip out this power supply. The, it's really flexible on what it can take. And it was kind of frustrating because when I ordered the Super Gun, 
it wasn't really clear what power supply to use. Like, you know, maybe it was so obvious to the people that they're like, hey, figure it out. But just an old computer power supply should do the trick. And I just chopped off the extra wires. I don't need them. And then I'm also using an OSSC with my super gun to record and stuff. You actually don't have to have an OSSC, so this is optional. But if you're interested in it, yeah, this is what it looks like. And it's about 150 bucks. Doesn't add any input lag. So that's the my setup there. And then it's going into an OSSC, which is going into my monitor. So let's take a look at the this price tally here. So I've kind of priced out how every, how much everything cost and all that. And you see the PGM is about 60 bucks. You can find it for 50, but then you add in shipping, it's about 60. USB decoder. That isn't necessary, but I, if you're planning to use like a regular arcade stick and not hard wiring your stick to your super gun, which then you really wouldn't be able to use it anywhere else. So it's definitely advisable. So I kind of count it as an essential. 35 bucks, I'll show you where to get that. Power supply, 10 bucks. You might already have one. Salvage one from an old computer. The super gun is about $70. I believe I did the conversion there. I believe it's about 70 bucks. The SCART cable, 10 bucks. Uh, yeah, you need a SCART cable to connect it to your, to your, whatever you're using, either a monitor or a, well, if you're an arcade monitor, I guess you don't need the SCART cable, but if you're doing an OSSC, you need it. And then the bootleg carts are $70 themselves. And then you might have to add in shipping depending on where you are. It might be up to 80 bucks per cart. And then optional is OSSC. So I've kind of totaled things out here, but this is definitely just an, a rough estimate because you, depending on your setup, you may have extra shit you have to buy, less shit you have to buy. But to get everything up and running with one game, I would say it's about $255. To get all three games, it's about $400. And then to get all uh, three games, I didn't count B-Storm because B-Storm, there's no bootleg card of it. You have to find the actual PGM card for it, but it's not that expensive, but it's more expensive than the bootlegs. And then all three games plus the OSSC is about $505, about. And the availability of all this shit is going to change, and if you're watching this in the future, I have no idea how the prices are gonna be in the future. But I'd say to get rolling, to get rolling, get your shit off the ground, $255, and then to get, you know, all the games, basically the full package, about 400 bucks, that is, you know, really incredible when you compare it to buying just Ketsui, P, you know, PCB alone, which is probably a grand or something, last time I saw one. You know, so, if you're, I guess I should get this, uh, I made this clear earlier, but if you're in this to collect, if you're in, you know, you're interested in buying PCBs to collect, this probably wouldn't be that much of an interest item for you, right? Because they're bootlegs. But if you're in this to play these games and to play them on original hardware, because the PGM is the original hardware, it's just that carts themselves that are bootlegs, this is definitely the way to go as far as if you're wanting to get your original hardware there without having to spend so much money. Plus, I feel like the PGM itself... So here's a listing when I... For one I found on eBay. I think this is the guy I bought mine from. Uh, so yeah, it, it came in great condition. Works really well. The PGM itself seems like a really solid piece of hardware too. And just looking at it, it seems like it's not going to crap out on you. And even if it did, you could just replace it for like 50 bucks. You know, that's, that's a lot better prospect than paying a grand for a PCB that may or may not crap out on you and then you may or may not be able to fix it or replace it, right? Like, I remember, uh, I think Eaglet's DOJ, uh, yeah, PCB crapped out on him. And I don't know if he ever got it fixed, but he could go the PGM route, right? If he was interested, that that could be a way to go. So yeah, you can find them on eBay. They're really common, easy to get. There seems to be a lot of them in South America, so for the South American homies out there, yeah, probably wouldn't be too hard to grab one.
So here is the super gun, and I'm gonna have all the links in the video description, obviously. That'd be a little silly, but all here's the super gun. This is the one I recommend. It's from Europe. Like all the super guns I find are in Europe, so yeah, they're hard to find if you're in North America. There doesn't seem to be any North American options. It's really solid, and it's kind of updated. I feel like it's got more features than a lot of older super guns I was looking at. But there are some weaknesses I want to go over, too, that would be a definite heads up to some of my North American friends. So for the shmuppers in Europe, there's really no concerns because this thing's got you covered. It's got SCART, and then it's got, uh, I think it's got some other shit you can plug it out to besides just SCART. Oh yeah, arcade, right? It has the original arcade monitor. So you put directly to an arcade monitor, you can do SCART to your, you know, SCART CRTs or whatever, or if you're using a OSSC to upscale it, you can do that. And you'll see in the video feed I have to the right, these games upscaled on the OSSC look amazing. They look so good. They look just as good as the PS4 port of Ketsui. I compared them, I mean it looks just as good. The thing is, is my recording here is only line doubled so it's not the highest quality possible because my capture card was being a little bitch and couldn't handle 4x mode but my monitor can so if you with the OSSC if you turn it up to 4x mode you can uh, basically get 1080p out of out of your super gun here and it looks amazing so you can do that it's just my capture card it was having a bit of a problem because it's a little piece of shit or something so yeah so it could only get the line doubled so it's like 480p ish 500p capture but out of the machine you can get 1080p and it looks amazing so and if you have a better capture card I'm sure you can capture it without a problem so this is the super gun I recommend yeah and I think you can plug a Genesis controller directly into it so if you want if you have a Genesis controller you want to use I think you can also use a Neo Geo controller you just plug directly into it too so that's cool but I think the way to go is if you have this in a cabinet you can just hardwire the controls or use the undam decoder right here so the undammed works with 360 sticks and PS3 sticks and pretty much all arcade sticks these days support either the PS3 or the 360 so I guess there might be someone not aware of that don't but most of them do so definitely a really really good piece of hardware I have tested this myself it does not add any additional lag and if it does it is completely unperceptible or whatever, whatever unmeasurable because I measured it just like I lag test all my other stuff with and without the decoder no difference so the decoder is uber fast I haven't noticed any sort of additional lag and I'm super sensitive about that uh, in case you guys don't know so yes I can basically guarantee you that the, the decoder does not add any additional lag and then so here are the links to get the bootleg carts here's the weird thing about the bootleg carts is that to buy them you, you're getting them out of China obviously to buy them you have to kind of go through, at least I did. Oh yeah, shout outs to BeagleBark on Discord. He helped me out a ton with this. I don't think I would have figured it out without him. So shout outs to BeagleBark for sure for helping me out figure this out. So here is the raw page if you, wanted, if you want the raw page. And then here's the page through Superbuy. And I bought it through Superbuy. And here's the thing is that what game you choose is listed by color, which is kind of silly. So it won't say Ketsui, DOJ, and uh, Espagluda. Instead, you just have to read it based on the colors. So orange is Espagluda, watermelon red is Ketsui, and pink is DOJ. So if you want to add them to the cart, you add them by colors. So orange, watermelon, add to cart. And with Superbuy, if you're ordering it from China, and there's some weirdness going on with how you order stuff. The first is, after you order it, it has to be 
put in a warehouse and then you have to go back into your super buy account and pay shipping after it gets to the warehouse and they ask you do you want to put insurance on this and stuff and these are just carts so I don't think you need to insure them and the bootlegs anyway but yeah it, it probably took me three or four no, weeks about seven months no three or four weeks to get them you know, it's not too bad coming out of China so it doesn't take too long to get them uh, yeah when they come they're in kind of rough condition they're obviously bootlegs so yeah they're in a little bit rough condition one of them I had to it was the Ketsui one actually I had to kind of mess around with the screws because it wasn't screwed together completely correctly but for the most part they're they're well put together enough to run without any sort of issues so there's that so once you get them all oh yeah some other things to watch out for I guess I should mention so do not buy I know the process I'm showing here where you get the link and then you go into super buy then you buy them through super buy and then you have to do all the shipping them out of China and stuff there's warehouse shit you have to take care of it's really not that bad it's but it's I know it's definitely a lot less convenient than just getting them off of eBay but the thing is is the ones I saw on eBay these people are just selling you the same bootlegs they're just being middlemen so they just order the bootlegs and we sell them and they're like hiking up the price really high I think I saw one like DOJ by itself for two hundred dollars so they are doubling and a little more like 2.3 the price don't do that to yourself you know you could get them all for the price of just the minimum let's look and see if anyone's doing that so a Dodon Pachi PGM let's see if anyone's doing that so here's B Storm okay so this guy's selling out of China for $94 plus that shipping that's still a little overpriced, but I, it's not nearly as jacked up as some of the other ones I saw. But yeah, you, you should get them for around 80 bucks altogether. So this guy's, you're paying about 100, so you're paying an extra 20. And they're shipping out of China, so it's probably coming from the same place. See again, a DOJ 118. Again, you don't need to pay that much. Here you go. Now, is this the real PCB or not if it's a real PCB then that's different but if there's some here we go here we go look at this what are they selling exactly uh, maybe that's that's not a bootleg anyway so I just warn you if you just jump on eBay like this one is definitely the same one you're just gonna end up paying extra this is 20 bucks over what you would pay through the super buy way of doing it and it's not like there's a quality issue or authenticity issue right they're bootlegs and they're all coming from the same place so just get it directly from the source don't pay the middleman now here's B Storm wow last time I saw B Storm so this is legit cause I don't think they make bootlegs of B Storm so yeah that's that's pretty fucking expensive. I saw one for 150 not too long ago, so I I don't know if it's worth buying this. I think this is a little overpriced to be honest. But I'm not really well versed in PCB prices. They seem all over the place. So let's be look back here and just I'll try to walk you through the setup process a little bit, and then we we'll call it a day, right? So the first thing you need to do is you need to get your PGM and all the parts you need. Um, so the super gun just slides onto the PGM. On the left is a volume knob. Make sure that's not jacked up too high. Otherwise, this happened to me. When you go to plug in your headphones or plug in your speakers and then turn on your PGM, you will blow out your damn eardrums. So there's a little volume knob on the left. Make sure that's kind of in the middle where you turn it on. Yeah, and so then the power supply goes right into this super super gun there. So let's go to the next picture. Next picture, here we are. Okay, so power supply goes here. This is your power button. These are your controls, so you either hardwire the 
uh, arcade controls here, or if you're using the decoder, it's like the reverse of a, a fight a fight stick PCB. It unsticks it. It undoes your inputs into the raw inputs. So you just match them up. It's super easy. It's one of the easiest wiring jobs ever. You just match them up. Up is up. Down is down. Super easy. Um, right here, service and test. So when the bootleg carts come, their settings aren't correct, but it's not a big deal. You just uh, go into test mode and switch them, you know, make sure they're on normal difficulty, make sure rapid fire's on, and then I put them on free play. That's, that's my pro tip here is, because here's your credit, right? This is an arcade machine, so there's not a credit button on your stick like you do on emulators. It's here on the super gun, there's your credit button. So that would mean, to put a credit, you'd always have to w get up, walk over, and hit the credit button. That's a pain in the ass. But if you go into service mode and put them on free play, you can just press start. So you don't have to deal with the credit button a bunch. Here are your video pots here if you want to adjust the color. And all the PGM cards have a test mode where you can adjust the color. I'll just leave it. It comes kind of correctly configured, at least for me. Oh. I almost forgot. A huge word of warning for my North American brothers. This thing does not connect to North American CRTs, consumer CRTs. Neither will it connect to a VGA monitor natively. So to connect to a VGA monitor, actually I'm not sure how you do that without adding lag. I don't know, maybe a retro tink? I don't know if retro tinks can do that. But connecting to a CRT consumer monitor in the USA is a bitch because this does not have composite it does not have S video it is also not natively capable of putting out those <coughs> videos so if you get something I dealt with this if so if let's say you got a SCART to S video cable right that makes sense they're, they're both analog video right no that does not work in order to get this thing to connect to a CRT through S video, you need to order this special transcoder thing, which I did, and I got from like Australia. I could the only one I could find was from Australia. It was like fifty bucks. It's pretty expensive. That's what you can use to connect it to S video, and then you use that with the arcade, with the arcade coloring, or the arcade. Can talk. Yeah, the arcade uh, video outputs. The issue, though, is that it kind of looks like shit. I'm not going to lie, that video transcoder thing makes it look very dull. The colors are extremely dull, and no amount of tweaking the colors here or tweaking the colors on the transcoder helps. So, it's still possible, and it doesn't add lag that I'm aware of, but it makes the colors really dull and shitty. I almost feel like, as insane as it sounds, is it would be better to take this, output it to an OSSC, and then output the OSSC to a, uh, oh god, Extron. <laughs> that would probably be better, it would be ridiculous, so maybe the transcoder would be simpler, but as far as getting better video quality, because the OSSC doesn't add lag at all. That's what's super cool about it. So that's basically the setup. Another cool thing is this super gun. This is why I really recommend this super gun. It outputs audio through the SCART cable. That's a big deal because that saves you a lot of headache without having to deal with external audio for your capturing stuff. Because what you can do is if you because it'll output audio through SCART and then go into the OSSC and the OSSC can accept audio through SCART and then output it through HDMI. So you literally can just plug in your SCART table, cable, plug that into your OSSC and you get audio through your HDMI into your capture card. Like I said, my capture card, the Elgato, it recognizes when I put it in 4X mode and 3X mode that ups the resolution. But it like cuts the video off in weird ways. I've only seen half the video. I am positive that this is fixable, that this is not a permanent issue, but my capture card is pretty temperamental. 
So a better capture card, I am sure, would not have these issues. So I'm, I'm confident you can record this. I think I actually did on my capture card before, so this must be just some current issue right now. So you can get some pristine, great looking, uh, yeah, video output. So talking with my fellow Schmutt brothers, right, who play arcade machines and say, you know, well, you can't really capture arcade footage, you can't really capture arcade gameplay very well. This super gun makes that happen because you get the super gun, you pair it with an OSSC, and then right here, see this? That goes to your arcade monitor. So you can get the video out of your arcade monitor. So when you're playing, it's just coming down the super gun, you can see it on your arcade monitor. And then you can also output the video through the SCART to a capture card. So you can get high quality capture as you play. And yeah, no issues. So people running events with arcade capture, you know, Stunfest, or, you know, maybe the Fightcade and stuff like that. If you guys are having issues with capturing the gameplay, yeah, this super gun really is a great solution. It's not too expensive either. Pair that with an OSSC or a Frame Meister. And you're you're good to go. I think even a retro tank you you'd, we wouldn't have as good of a video capture, but it's still doable. So yeah, that is the PGM. I really dig it. It's pretty awesome. Um, there's no ways to fix the rotations or change the rotations. I should also warn you about that. So you either need to make sure that your CRT can rotate the correct way, you know, or you need to make sure that the monitor you're using, the gaming monitor can rotate because you can't play Tate, right? This is an arcade machine. So yeah, awesome stuff. I've been playing it and it and it uh it's been really helpful for me with my uh, retro retro arch shmup arch stuff because now I can literally test the arcade games compared to emulation and see what's the difference, how does it feel? I absolutely feel like if you're a big fan of Ketsui or DOJ you're really into those games, I mean, this is kind of something you should look into because it's a way to play the arcade games without having to spend so much money. But I mean, if you're not into the arcade stuff, I get that, like arcade hardware and stuff, but if you are, I think you should check it out. Anyway, thanks for tuning in.